With the New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey, former Berkeley County Council President Doug Copenhaver. Doug, good morning to you. Good morning. It's so, always so, always good to be here. Soon it will be a commission again. I heard that. And, and no, at, at no point during your tenure was it called a commission, correct? We tried, but didn't didn't succeed. Yeah, I always wanted to call you a commissioner the entire time you were on. It made it uh, would make it so much easier, Rob, rather than being called city councilman all the time. All the time, yeah, because it was confusing for a lot of people, including me. Yeah. And uh, via telephone, the uh, director of the First Step, Brandon Kramer, joins us as well. Brandon, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And Doug, this is uh, something you and I have talked about on this show for, I guess you're telling me six years now, because I remember when you were telling me that you were initially involved in this. Yeah, I was uh, one of the lucky few that would, uh, got interviewed by Brandon and, and uh, was selected to be one of the five in the state of West Virginia to be part of this uh, filming. And uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, it met all my ex- expectations and more. It, it really turned turned out well and um and the g- good thing is it, it basically you know i was chosen from the addiction side uh but van jones was was fighting for prison reform and you know you got to think and matt you know it more than anybody you go down that wrong path and it's so hard to turn back sometimes and all of a sudden you get get in trouble with the local law you get in trouble with the prosecuting attorney's office you get sent to regional jails and all of a sudden um, you know, where Van portion came in, which he was very much involved in, in our side too, um, was is, is prison reform. Because now if you didn't, didn't, you know, you had three strikes, you're out, and you're going to prison for a very, very long time. And, um, and it's all about what I've been preaching all, all these years uh, since 2011 is we send people to prison or jail to, to, to try to cure their addiction and it actually takes them in the wrong direction because you're only putting them with criminals that's worse than they are. Good point. This uh, this film will premiere at the Apollo on June the 8th, by the way. Brandon, tell us the concept of this film. I know Doug has filled in the blanks in the past, but it's been a while since we've talked about it in detail. Yeah, I mean, the film is a, a pretty harrowing and inspiring story that follows Doug four other leaders across the state of West Virginia and uh, a group of community leaders in South Central Los Angeles who, you know, put party affiliation, put geographic region, race, all these, all these things that typically divide us aside and came together around their shared really pain and expand and, and and personal experiences with loss around addiction to form a coalition that went to Washington DC to advocate for bipartisan shared solutions to the addiction crisis. Um, the effort Doug was a part of is, is a huge part of this story. And it's really an incredible thing to be able to see, you know, see folks who you know, sit down, break bread together. You know, there's, there's, it's very easy to get lost in this narrative that we can't work together, we can't find common ground when you pay attention to the news. When you're in real people's lives who are on the front lines of these fights, like Doug and, uh, and, and Dee Pierce and, and Sheriff West and all, all the group leaders from West Virginia, and you see people break bread across these dividing lines, and you see what's possible when people come together, it's truly, truly remarkable. So that's what the film's called. It's, the, it's called The First Step. And the film it focuses largely on West Virginia and L.A., but it also you know, included a coalition that wound up bringing Jared Kushner from the Trump White House, Donald Trump himself, uh, Van Jones, Cory Booker, Vice President Kamala Harris, Kim Kardashian. There's a there's a whole big bipartisan coalition that came together to get this bill passed, which is called the First Step Act. Doug, tell me about your trip to Los Angeles and what it was like when uh, South Central meets West Virginia and vice versa. Well, I think the first thing, Rob, was uh, South Central L.A. Uh, folks were were petrified to come to West Virginia. Um, they were literally scared. 
uh, Confederate flags flying, uh, our reputation uh, that we're a bunch of rednecks and stuff like that. And uh, they were now. I, 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 go ahead, Matt. You were in Welch. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's that's where they came. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was Welch, West Virginia. Yeah. Just for context. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, and, but they, but uh, the sheriff of McDowell County, uh, Sheriff West, made them feel comfortable. <laughs> Good. So, um, but anyway, I, it, was my, it was my suggestion to to Brandon that if they're willing to come to West Virginia, why don't we go to Skid Row, right? And uh, so, so Brandon and Van thought that was a good job. Lance and everybody and our good good thought. And uh, so off we go to South Central LA. We 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 meet uh, Pete White at his his place of of hope of trying to help people right in Skid Row. Um, and uh, we, we started taking trips. And we also went to a, a, an all-women's prison while we were there. And just to hear the stories of those ladies uh, that have been there for a long time, doesn't have any hopes of getting out in any time soon. But, but you got the feeling that they paid their time. You know, they paid their time. And, and, um, and again, this is... This is uh, this film went way further than what I ever thought it would because that's what Van Jones was fighting for. And one of the things that uh, Brandon's talking about being bipartisan, um, I told Van when I was riding around in a vehicle with Van down in, down in McDowell County, it was very risky for me to be riding around with Van Jones, as liberal as he is on CNN. Uh, to to be riding around with me, an elected official, being a Republican and a conservative. And um, we had a nice discussion. And um, um, I'll, I'll tell you that um, this film will show you, uh, I think, the true Van Jones to where he is. He, he fought hard, um, took a lot of heat from from the left. Uh, but it, it didn't matter. He had he was on a mission. He he was wanting to get something done, and uh, and he did it. He walked down that middle aisle, and I'm very proud of, of that moment, and I'm very very thankful that I was chosen. John Gilstrap, dig a little deeper into what the film is actually about. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it starts off, John, that uh, some of the filming that we did was um, about the differences between. West Virginia addiction in South Central LA. And also one of the things that was looked upon was how can the folks in LA that's been been struggling with addiction much longer than West Virginia, West Virginia started getting more recognized for their addiction on the opioid crisis. And they were willing to help us and we were trying to discuss and talk to them about that. The other part of it was when we, we go to, to Congress and we were able to, to, to go into the White House and, and, um, and, and meet with some of our federal elected officials um, to, to bring them up how it's hurting you know our nation and working both sides of the aisle and, and uh, doing that. And then Van Jones, um, which I wasn't part of the prison reform filming, but done a, a wonderful job, Kim Kardashian as well, um, of, of trying to get the message across of, of, of um, you know, we need to get some people out of prison, kind of like our day report centers, um, that, that have spent their time for the crime that they did. And most of these people were there under drug charges. And I'm talking, Brandon, you might be able to correct me, 20, 30 years and may, maybe uh, staying there quite longer. Um, and um, and it basically, I think the, the, the mission in the film was to be able to bring two complete opposite parties or sides of views together. And if we can do it with West Virginia and South Central L.A., then why can't our elected officials at the federal level do the same? And they did. They came together. Brandon Kramer, go right ahead. Yeah, you know, look, we're we're days away from a possible default, uh, you know, as a result of both sides not being able to come together and find compromise. So there's a way of looking at this moment with a lot of fear, 
uh, a lot of um, you know a lot of disdain, a lot of you know vitriol for for all sides. And I think what Doug, Van, uh, the folks from South Central Los Angeles were able to do in the story of this film. When you watch these 90 minutes, you're seeing a blueprint of what is possible when people who are dealing with issues in their communities who are not, you know, talking heads, not sitting in newsrooms, but actually experiencing addiction, what the criminal justice system does in their lives, when they come together, they talk about it, they work together, a lot is possible. This bill that they all worked on to get passed, the First Step Act, has resulted in freedom for tens of thousands of people all across the country being released from federal prison. When people come together and compromise, it has real consequences for in people's lives, and that's what this story, um, un, uh, you know, that's what this story unfolds. I also just want to note this screening at the Apollo Theater. This is the West Virginia premiere of this film. So, you know, as a filmmaker, you're, we worked on this film for over five years. It's, it's now been uh, six since the, since the film premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival, and we have not had a theatrical premiere of the film yet in West Virginia. So this is a really big moment for us. Spent a lot of time filming in West Virginia. Doug, Dee, Sheriff West, all these leaders poured their hearts into this film. And so it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big moment of bringing the film back to uh, where it all started. And that's at the Apollo on June the 8th. Matt Harvey, you are a prosecuting attorney. Your thoughts on what we're discussing? Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to you, Mr. Kramer. I, I was fortunate enough to rent and watch the the documentary this morning prior to the show um, because this is an issue that I deal with on a on a day-to-day basis as a prosecuting attorney um, what and it's it's I think everybody's gonna really enjoy it once you watch it it's not what you think there's a lot I'm not gonna ruin it just go to the Apollo watch it or, or rent it on on Amazon Prime no be at the Apollo be at the Apollo the and then rent it <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Do tell, both. tell everybody else because Apollo only holds about 300 people well we can get 300 people in there absolutely is, is Mr. Thompson coming up for it wait we'll have to give him a call we'll do that and uh, the, the good sheriff of McDowell County Sheriff West yeah and who else who else from West Virginia um, what is it uh, Lillian was it Lillian uh, down at the um, down in uh, Huntington Brandon yeah, uh, no, it's Rhonda Edmonds Ron. from Lily's Place in yeah. oh, uh, yeah. in Huntington. But but at the screening will be uh, Kevin Knowles, Mayor of Martinsburg, Nathan Harmon, uh, Sheriff of Berkeley County, Timothy, uh, the Director of Berkeley County Timothy, uh, Community Corrections, and and Doug and myself. Right? Is that right, Doug? That's, I guess that that's right. That's correct. And, and maybe the prosecutor of Jefferson County might, might show up. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, th- th- we'll be up on stage being able to, to uh, explain uh, the filming and uh, post-film and then be able to probably do some Q&A as well. well here, here's a question I had for you, Mr. Kramer. Um, has, has this coalition, this unlikely coalition, disbanded? You know, it's a, it's a, it, here's what I would say. I would say that the... On the on the political side, and I would say on the grassroots side in West Virginia and L.A., those relationships that formed have been lasting. So, you know, we just we just recently had the premiere of the film in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, one of the community leaders in Los Angeles, Virgie Walker, you know, she was dealing with uh, one of her her one of her close family members was very very gravely ill, and the person that was giving her counsel and really there for her through that journey was Sheriff Martin West. This is a black community leader in Los Angeles who had never, you know, had this relationship with a with a you know white conservative sheriff from West Virginia. And now they're close friends. And so on a, on a relational level, the impact has been profound. Doug, I know you have you know, your own relationships with folks from L.A. as well, so you can probably speak to that. And then on a political side, you know, to get this bill passed, uh, you know, conversations had to happen that weren't happening. You know, Hakeem Jeffries was one of the co-sponsors of the bill. He was working across the aisle with 
Jared Kushner with, uh, you know, Republican senators. And even though you can see it, look in the news and say, okay, well, you know, are any of these, did anything last from this moment to now? I think the answer is that those relationships behind the scenes are, are, are what's allowing the small breakthroughs that happen. The problem is that, uh, you know, we don't have enough momentum or, you know, reinforcement to allow these kind of risks to happen. If you see the film, you'll see the people that stepped out. Into the, there's, a, there's a quote in the film, which I'm sure you remember, which is when you stand in the middle of the road, you get hit on both sides. And you see in this story somebody like Van, when, when he steps out of the progressive lane to try to build these bridges, work with the Trump administration to get this bill passed, he experiences enormous backlash from the left. And in that way, the, we're, we're hoping that the film, it shows an example of what's possible when people come together, but it also shows why so few people do this, because it's really, really painful for Doug. The fact that him sitting in a car with Van Jones, you know, he had to have real uh, you know, there's some concern about that. We shouldn't live in a society where spending time with people we disagree with is a risk to our safety, to our reputation. That should be encouraged. And I think this film hopefully can play a role in it. Brandon Kramer, the director of The First Step uh, via telephone with us. Doug Copenhaver, who was involved from the very beginning in the making of The uh, First Step, is in the film itself. We're here with Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey and also co-hosting New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. I got a text from Michael Null during the course of this interview from the Apollo. And by the way, does he did say the Apollo capacity is 500, so there's 500. room for a couple hundred more than thought there. And Great. Again, on uh, on June the 8th. Um, uh, Brandon, uh, Doug, I, I can't remember who the stand-up comedian was that I heard say this years ago. Might have been J.J. Uh, Walker, and he said, if if black people do it, it's a crime. If it's white people, it's an epi- it's a pen- it's a um, epidemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in regard to uh, to drug use and and, and similar other uh, social behaviors, Doug, did you find that to be the case when you went to South Central and you began talking about this issue? Well, they brought it to to the fact they always. You know that's that's what's always spoken about. It, it wasn't getting the attention that it needed until the uh, opioid um, crisis came to reality, and it was affecting the white folks as well. Um, so epidemic. So yeah, it, it's always talked about, and 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 a lot of the prison reform side of it, you'll see that that there's a large percentage of them that are black and that very few are white. And um, I'm telling you, it's, just, it's good to see people get out that, that have, have paid their time. It's kind of like I always say, and probably said on the show, isn't it crazy that when we were kids, we, we can either choose to take, um, it used to be stand in the corner or get our butt smacked. Uh, and, and I can remember getting my butt smacked pretty good. And uh, when that happened, my punishment was over, right? But the the thing about when you get in trouble with the law, and especially at the federal level, even when when you get done with doing your time, you're you're still being punished because now you know might not be able to to get a job. You may, may not be able to support your family, and and that that um, uh, stigma. And, and stays with you. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a fact. It, it's out there. We've made several references to the First Step Act. What, is, what are the elements of the legislation? Well, th- that might be better for, for Brandon to answer that question because he was on that side. I, I spent very little bit of time, but, I'm, I mean, he'll, he'll be able to explain it better than I can. Brandon? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it did several things to reform federal prisons in, in, the, in this country. Um, yeah, we won't go into every single one, but a few of them is it, it most importantly, it rolled back some of the uh, unjust sentencing provisions that, you know, led to mass incarceration in the first place. So, for example, there was there has historically been a disproportionate sentencing guidelines for uh, from from crack and to cocaine. So. Chemically speaking, crack and cocaine are basically the exact same substance, yet the sentencing for 
uh, crack was, uh, I believe, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was 18, initially it was like 99 to 1, so 99 times the sentence that, that cocaine was having, and I think it got moved down to 18 to 1, and there currently is a bill in Congress right now that has a huge bipartisan support behind it called the Equal Act, which would take the work that the First Step Act did and take it it's basically a second step act. It would make that disparity one to one. And the reason why that's so significant is because a lot of people are serving very unjustly long sentences for essentially the same substance that uh, has a much lesser sentence, and that has disproportionately affected communities of color. So it rolled back that. It also uh, provided uh, funding and resources for job training inside of prisons and for reentry programs. It banned the shackling of women during childbirth. It created a uh, mandatory uh, uh, requirement for people going into the federal system to be incarcerated within a certain amount of driving miles from their loved ones to maintain connections to family while they're serving their time amidst many other things. So it didn't do everything. And that was part of what this, you know, it's called the first step back for a reason. It was a true first step. It, it opened the door to bipartisan criminal justice reform. And the hope is we've been rolling this film out across the country. We've screened it, uh, you know, in, in red states and blue states and in, 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 in lots of different places, trying to encourage more bipartisan uh, work on this issue, in particular in states. Because, you know, there's only about 10 percent of the prison population in federal prisons. So this bill only affected federal prisons. So the real work that needs to be happening is on a state level. Brandon, does the first step, the, the repeal, does this go back to the Lenny Bias overdose and the three strikes you're out laws that began getting passed right after Lenny Bias overdosed and died? You know, I, I wish I could comment on that. I don't know that particular case, but I, I, I do know that the laws that it's affecting are laws that came around the exact same time that three strikes you're out, uh, you know, laws started to go into place. But I, I don't want to speak, okay. speak out of turn. I don't know that specific case. Well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker. One of the things about being a documentary filmmaker, I'm not an expert on criminal justice reform, but when, when you're working on a film, you kind of have to you start to do a lot of research and learn as much as you can about the issue. Yeah, you immerse yourself in it there. Lenny Bias uh, was a star basketball player out of Maryland around the time of Michael Jordan, drafted number one by the Celtics, and died uh, from uh, cocaine use right uh, right after the draft before he was uh, about to go to Celtics camp. And his career never happened, and there were a lot of laws that came out of Lenny Bias' death, and it sounds like this is uh, repealing or rolling back some of those. Uh, lost Doug, go right ahead. You look like you're ready to no, say something. No, no, I was just, I was just wanting to make sure everyone was aware that um, this isn't your typical film. Um, you have a chance to come to Martinsburg, make a, a nice night out of uh, downtown Martinsburg for dinner, maybe before the show, and and you're th this. This film, Lance uh, and Brandon, the Kramer brothers, done such a good job on this film that it's already uh, on Amazon. Um, and you can you can you can um, rent the movie on Amazon, or you can just come to the Apollo, which uh, I know Mike's excited to see the Apollo Civic Theater filled up with 500 people. I'm excited to try to get it filled up, and um, and it will bring a lot a spotlight to the Apollo as well. And with that all said, uh, Brandon and his brother Lance and and Mike was willing to also not make it just about the Apollo and the, and the showing of the movie, but also a a um, fundraiser uh, for a local nonprofit with Stephanie Stout and to reintroduce people back into society after they've gotten clean and uh, through recovery and also money going to adult, adult drug court for Berkeley County because um, you know they, they need funding to be able to, to enhance the, the um, great work that they're doing and, and trying to save families and and keep keep uh, the loved ones in the in their in their home. So this is going to be a night of hopefully uh, people will come with an open mind and a and a, and a, a heartfelt uh, uh, film that that they're going to say, hey, we understand what's going on, and um, 
it took me a long time, and it, and I had to pay a dear price um, uh, to um, understand the power of addiction. Yeah, and uh, Doug lost a son to that and uh, has related a very powerful story about that on this program in the past. And Doug, let me ask you, before we wrap up here, was uh, was making this film and then seeing the, the finishing product a bit therapeutic for you? Anytime... Any time that I, I'm around um, recovery efforts, um, it uh, helps me heal. Um, the um, if you if you're ever around a county council meeting when I was there, uh, being the president, any time Tim Zaya would bring participants in that have been successful and tell their whole life story or how they were uh, the typical loved child of somebody's and uh, how they ventured down the wrong path and and they and now they're clean and they're they're smiling their family's back together and um i'd, I'd always tear up um and um but i will tell you things like this um is um it 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 helps me heal because you're um able to see someone um turn their life around and it's kind of like um when i was at the county council and, and it was my last meeting and a lot of people came in and and um wished me well and um wanted to compliment me um on a lot of things that happened in the 12 years i was there and a lot of it was um personnel and a lot of it was from the recovery side and um I appreciated all the thanks. Um, they're 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 all part of my family now, and um, but the one that deserves um, credit uh, would be our son Douglas, um, because his father would have never done the things that he did. Uh, if if his son wasn't able to show him how hard it is uh, to break free of addiction so um, I wouldn't have been part of this film if it wouldn't have been for Douglas's sacrifice I wouldn't have been part of the recovery efforts in uh, Berkeley County if it wasn't for him because I was one of those ones that said you got yourself into this mess. You got to be strong enough to get yourself out. And there was no hope. There was no help in Berkeley County. At the time of his death, um, um, he there was at least 2,000 people that came to his service, and um, or I think it was anyway. And um, there, my wife and I got 300 phone calls and letters from people that we didn't even know asking and begging to send them in the direction that they needed to find help and i never answered one of those calls or one of those letters because there wasn't nothing in berkeley county at the time so, and there is now absolutely doug thank you so much for all the work you've done and and uh, especially for relating difficult stories which have led to tremendous improvements in berkeley county and how we look at handle and the attitudes we have toward addiction it's uh, even though i'm crying now it's 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 healing god bless you my brother thank you brandon thank you so much for being on the program today we look forward to the west virginia premiere the screening june the 8th at the apollo by the way to get tickets apollo civic theater.org screening is at seven the apollo will uh, fill up with 500 people brandon final thought uh final thought is just really appreciate y'all having me on the show and I, you know I, I can't I can't say enough how meaningful it has been for me to form this relationship and really you know as a filmmaker as a documentary filmmaker it, it really turns into a friendship that I've, I've been lucky to have with Doug and and all five of the uh, folks from West Virginia you know they these are people that are every single day 
is a fight to bring more resources and awareness to this issue in their community. Doug's been fighting, you know, as you just heard, you know, ever since the, the tragic loss of his son. And for them to trust us to come into the commu- into their lives, into their communities. You know, Doug sat me down in his pickup truck when I first met him and said, if you're going to make this film, if you're going to tell this story, I need you to do it with integrity, with respect for the people's lives that are at stake. And um, it's been a, just a beautiful journey. I've learned so much from you, Doug, and I'm really uh, just honored and grateful to be celebrating what we've accomplished together in creating this film uh, on uh, at, at the Apollo Theater in, in a few weeks. So thank you for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Brandon. Thank you so much for joining us. Brandon Kramer, along with Lance Kramer, involved in the making of The First Step, premiering June the 8th in West Virginia at the Apollo Civic Theater, 7 p.m., apollocivictheater.org, to get your tickets. Doug, thank you so much. Thank you, Rob.